Let's get right into the action then. This watch is the Generation 2 version 3 of the Bambino, which is the Bauhaus styled one. They do also do a few other versions, as their name would suggest, and they have slightly different design cues. For your £100, you get build quality that definitely rivals watches that I've seen at two or three times this retail price. The level of finishing on the case and dial in particular is absolutely fantastic. There is light brushing down the flanks and the remainder is polished, including the case back. The dial is definitely the most striking part of this watch though, so it's where I want to start. This grey version is probably the most understated colourway. They do have a variety of other colours available which are generally a bit more big and bold, but even with this one, the texture is awesome. You get a gorgeous sunburst effect that is made all the better by domed glass. With this one in particular, you almost have like a, a pearlescent finish on the top, and that glass really gives a warped edge to the perimeter which I really like. Overall, it's just a really attractive watch to look at. When you're choosing a watch, obviously those looks are going to be of critical importance as to whether you're going to buy the watch or not. And it's evident that plenty of people like this design due to its popularity online. As you can tell by the styling, these are really meant to be dress watches. I went with this grey one in an attempt to maybe go for something that would be more wearable as a casual option. You might be able to get away with that, but having received it and really spent some time with it, I don't think that's really going to be much of a viable option. Due to the shape and styling, I think I've got some better options for casual wear elsewhere. One thing worth touching on is the dimensions, which I think are somewhat deceiving with this one. Several of the Bambino models, including this V3, come in at 40.5mm in diameter, 11.5mm in depth, and have a lug-to-lug -lug size of just under 47mm. On paper, this makes it sound like a pretty average size watch but I think there are a couple of factors that make this feel smaller when it's on the wrist. Firstly, almost half of the overall case depth is actually taken up by the glass, so this watch definitely looks and feels much thinner, because 30 or 40% of that depth is really transparent anyway. So I think overall they've done really well to package this automatic movement in such a slim case. The lugs sit quite tight and short compared to the rest of the body, and as a result, this wears far more like a 38mm or 39mm piece. I think if you've got average size wrists or skinny wrists, you're going to have some success with this one. Overall, it should look in proportion and really nice. If you've got really big wrists though, you're going to be out of luck, at least with this variant. If that sounds like you, then you're probably best looking at the version 4. That one's a bit of an outlier and is slightly larger, it's about 42mm. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, if you've got super thin wrists, they did recently release a 36mm variant. That one's usually labelled as like a unisex or a ladies version, but I think it's totally wearable. So if you're looking for more of that classic styling where the watch is a little bit smaller, that could be the one to go for. I'll link both of those versions also in the description. Another size worth mentioning is the lug width. This is one thing that ticks me off. It's 21mm. Why? This is outside of the typical evenly sized lug width, such as 20 or 22 millimeters. Thanks, Orient, for trolling us with this one. As you can guess, it does really limit your strap options, and it's going to mean that some of your existing straps just won't fit on this one. It'll either be a squeeze or they'll be too loose. I struggle to see why they initially made that design decision. I think it's a bit clumsy. The default leather strap provided with this one is okay. It's made of the low tier genuine leather and is pretty firm to say the least. I've seen better and also worse elsewhere. You can tell that they've somewhat cut costs in this area and put it back into other areas of the watch instead, which I can get behind. I think this strap would certainly look better with a taper too, but really, when I'm considering this watch as a whole, that's an okay compromise. If you're a budget watch hunter, this piece of leather will probably serve its purpose. Powering the Bambino line is the in-house automatic Orient Caliber F6724 which features a date complication alongside hacking and hand winding. You get the nice smooth second hand sweep at 6 beats every second, and when you consider the cost of the watch, I think it represents excellent value for money. It's by no means a, a fantastic movement, but at this price point, you can't really expect more. I honestly wouldn't mind if I saw this type of movement in a watch at twice this retail price. When you consider the market as a whole, you get tons of brands just ramming really cheap quartz movements into watches that are way more expensive than this Orient. So overall, it's great to see. This one can be a bit noisy if you have your ear right up to it, but I think overall it's a great option if you're new to mechanical watches. Maybe you want to try one of these movements out, something like this is a good alternative to something like a Seiko 5. 
Covering this watch is a piece of domed mineral glass. Considering the price of the watch, I think this is perfectly suitable and will provide some limited scratch protection. I love these domed crystals. I think when done well, they really add an air of class to a watch. Especially when looking at an angle, you get that nice warping that you can only get with this domed stuff. And it still slips under sleeves well, so overall, it's a good choice. The case itself is your typical stainless steel. This one features a screw down case back and provides the expected standard 30 meters of water resistance. I doubt anyone will be trying to go diving in this watch, so that's fine. You get a signed crown and grip is good, making adjustments really easy. As if all that wasn't enough for 100 quid, you get a watch that's made in Japan by a company with a great reputation and a long history. Orient are really renowned for making decent quality watches, especially in the lower price brackets. This not only means you'll generally experience good quality control, but also makes you feel better when wearing it. The origins of Orient date back over 100 years, so they're really not going to let you down. Not to mention the resale value of a piece like this from a heritage brand is going to be quite good. Orient are well known, reasonably respected. You're not going to be throwing 100 quid down the toilet if you change your mind. Overall, I like the way that the Orient logo is done on this watch. To be honest, I'm one of them people who quite likes the logo anyway. On this Bambino, it's not too massive. There isn't too much clutter and text on the dial either. In my opinion, this watch sets the benchmark for affordable watches. So many low-end watch brands advertise their watches as amazing value or affordable luxury. What I'd say is, compare those watches to something like this. This watch is readily available, looks great, has quality components and is outrageously priced. I think it really puts some of the claims into perspective. While I generally think the whole concept of affordable luxury is BS, I think you could argue that this watch almost follows those principles. Essentially, you get a watch that looks and feels far better than it probably should for £100. If you're one of these micro brands out there, you know, I think you've got to get at least somewhat close to this. Now, obviously, brands like Orient are going to be able to offer this at this sort of price point because they've got the infrastructure. But this is a good baseline to aim for. However, I do have a couple of extra niggles. Firstly, the lugs aren't drilled, which is a slight pain when the default strap isn't quick release. I think I'd also prefer the hands if they were slightly slimmer. While they're by no means huge, the square shape combines to make them look a little bit stubby. The date window would also look better if it was slightly darker in my opinion. I like the beveled edges and the fact that it's low profile, however the white doesn't perfectly blend in with the dial. Maybe that's just me being a bit too picky. On this colour variant, you really don't notice it much, but maybe you would on some of the darker colourways. So to summarise, if you like the sound of this watch, what are you waiting for? I don't think you can go wrong with one of these, it's more than met my expectations. I've owned a lot of watches around this price point and this is definitely up there with the best of them.